Hey guys, uh, Political Junkie 2414 here, and welcome back to my next election prediction video. Today, I'm going to be doing something uh, first for me. I'm going to be doing my first recorded uh, uh, 2024 presidential election prediction. Um, I have been doing, you know, Senate and Governor predictions almost every two weeks. This will obviously be less common because the election is a lot farther away. This is, you know, 2024 is in two and a half years, or this election. Um, but I wanted to start out, and I was going to, uh, this will be one of my many matchups that we'll be updating. Um, right now I'm going to be doing a matchup between President Joe Biden, of course, the Democrat, and former President Donald Trump, the Republican. Joe Biden is, uh, there's been some speculation, more than just some, there's been a lot of speculation about whether or not uh, he is going to run again for a second term. He is, uh, he will be 80 this fall. He's going to be 82 um, at the end of his first term. And if he's reelected in 2024, by the time he leaves office for his second term in 2029, he would be 86 years old. And so Biden says he plans to run for re-election. Um, of course, that is not a definitive, you know, yes or no. He, but yes, he plans to. Um, so that is really it. Uh, Donald Trump is, you know, pretty much the biggest name in the Republican Party right now. His, you know, ever since he left office, his uh, grip on the party has been struggling or has been slipping with... Um, some losses in a uh, previous or um in uh primaries in um in 2022 there are a lot of other possible candidates like ron desantis liz cheney um who else marco rubio and uh, nikki haley people of that sort but trump still has the biggest uh name in the party right and or has is the biggest name in the party right now he's pretty much the face of the republican party has been for the last six years um and there was some speculation he was going to announce on the 4th of july or in, that he was running for uh running for president in 2024 but um that did not come to be but it's pretty clear that trump wants to run and it's not a question really of if it's when um, even though the January 6th hearings have been providing some, uh, some, uh, I guess, what's, what's, what's the word, I guess, reason for him to not run, you know, because of his, uh, his involvement in the January 6th riots and also in, and, and also the potential criminal charges. Um, so, you know, right now in general election polling, against uh with biden against trump trump's up by two points this most recent poll that, that came out um a few weeks ago trump is leading biden by three percent and uh, biden is doing very poorly nationwide right now of course due to inflation gas prices um he has been in a very tough situation with getting his legislation through congress because of the narrow majority especially in the u.s senate Right now, I'm just filling in the safe states for both Joe Biden and Donald Trump. For Joe Biden, quite a few. Um, gets 159 safe electoral votes. Uh, Oregon and Washington, or not Washington, Oregon and New Jersey, I'm not going to be putting as safe. These are pretty, um, well, I'll talk about them in a minute. Um, I do have a couple extra safe states for Donald Trump than what he got in 2020. I have Kansas and Alaska. These states were very close to being solid, not so much Alaska, but Kansas was just was just barely uh, likely. It was almost safe, just under safe. Alaska has been trending leftward recently, but in 2016, even with, um, you know, or in 2016, Trump won it by almost 15 points, even with a third party candidate. And uh, I think that if Gary Johnson or Jill Stein were not on the ballot in 2024, that would be, um, that would give uh, Alaskans um, some more, I, I, I guess it would, there would be more Alaskans voting for Trump, more Republicans, more, you know, more Republican voters voting for Trump, because, you know, Alaska is a very independent state politically. It does have it does usually give large amounts of percentages uh, relative to the to the rest of the nation for preferred party candidates, 
And yeah, in Kansas, you know, it was 20 points for Trump in 2016. Biden greatly improved on his vote share, but I think it's going to be somewhere around, you know, about 20 points, you know, what 2016 was. Kansas is still a very red state. Um, for the likely states, I'm going to be putting, giving Joe Biden, Oregon, Colorado, New Mexico, Virginia, New Jersey, and Maine at large. In Oregon, this state has not always been the most solid for the Democratic Party. Joe Biden won the state by 16 points in 2020, pretty strong margin. In 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton only won it by 11 points. In 2012, Obama won it by 12. In 2008, Obama won it by 16. Um, also, and in 2004, this was really the last time Oregon used to be a swing state, or that Oregon was a swing state. It was a swing state in the Bush years. 2000, Al Gore only won it by less than half a percentage point. In 2004, John Kerry did a lot better, won it by almost five, or won it by four points. Um, but you know, Oregon is not as red as it used to be. At least not on the national level. And I think Oregon, you know, could be safe for Biden, but I think it'll be just under safe. Uh, same with New Jersey. Of course, New Jersey was slightly closer with 15.9 for Biden, just about 16 points. But we did see a major reduction in New Jersey's governor race. Of course, that was a lean margin and, you know, Joe Biden's not going to win by such a narrow margin. But of course, 2021 was a very good year for Republicans on, you know, the on the governor race level, you know, they won Virginia, almost won New Jersey, didn't do so well in that California re recall, though, but that was, that was a long shot anyway. Um, yeah, in Colorado, New Mexico, these states have been pretty, have become pretty much democratic strongholds, particularly Colorado. So you can see back in, um, you know, back in the, back from 2004 to, uh, to 2016, these were pretty, uh, good showings for, um, the Republican candidates in 2016, Hillary Clinton only won Colorado by five points. In 2012, same for Obama. In 2008, he won it by nine points, which was pretty strong, but it was also a blue wave year. In fact, McCain did better than Trump did in the state. Of course, Joe Biden won the state by 13 points, uh, almost 14, 13.5. And all the way back in 2004, and now I'm going all over the place. In 2004, Colorado, this was the last time Colorado voted red. Voted for George W. Bush by five points. Um, so I think Colorado is pretty much going to be likely. There's a lot of room for Democrats to fall in Colorado. They have some pretty strong uh, races there in um, Colorado this year. In New Mexico, I would say that this is a state that I think Democrats should watch out for, but not in 2024 if Biden is the nominee. I think that um, Hispanics in New Mexico, Hispanic voters are still relatively democratic compared to the rest of the nation. Uh, pretty democratic. It, it really, you know, depends on what state you're looking at. If you're looking at a state like Florida, that is a, um, a state where Hispanic turnout is now um, skewed towards Republicans. Uh, and but in New Mexico, Biden won it by 11 points. There was a competitive governor's race there, but again, governor races are a lot different than nationwide races. In Virginia, even though Glenn Youngkin won very narrowly over Terry McAuliffe, uh, that was mainly due to the fact that he was not a Trump-like candidate and the fact that Terry McAuliffe uh, was um, kind of failed to appeal to vote to um, uh, suburban voters who were concerned about what their kids were learning in schools, you know, the culture war. You know, McAuliffe, of course, said that he doesn't think schools should, or the parents should be telling schools what they should teach. That hurt him with a lot of voters. That was a pretty bad gaffe for McAuliffe. And so that's what pretty much cost him there. He, he also repeatedly called Trump, or called Yunkin a Trump wannabe, which is not true at all. That did not work at all with, um, with voters in Virginia. Um, but I think with Trump back on the ballot, that is going to give Biden an, an inherent advantage. I think that um, Yunkin, you know, is not some unstoppable juggernaut now. He did, you know, pull off the impo nearly the impossible in Virginia. But I think, you know, the state does have a Democratic lean. It's just not as blue as we might have thought it had become, you know, that one year span from 2020 to 2021, now it looks like it's a lot more competitive. But, you know, it's not going to be as competitive as 2008, um, sorry, 2008 when Obama won it by six points, or uh, 2012 when Obama only won it by four. 
Um, so yeah, I think that there's some room for um, Biden to uh, fall in this state. I think he'll win it by about five or six points. In Maine, the final likely state for Democrats, um, in Maine at large, Biden won it by nine points. It was surprisingly competitive in um, 2016 for Hillary Clinton. She only won it by three points. Uh, the you know this was after Maine had been pretty solidly Democratic. It has at large it hasn't voted for um, a Republican candidate since Bush in 1988. Um, of course, Maine's second district um, I will give right now is likely uh, Republican. You know Donald Trump does really well with the working class here and the rural voters, and he's probably going to win it by somewhere around the margins he's won it in uh, 2016 and 2020. But I think Maine at large, Biden wins by seven or eight points, maybe six, uh, somewhere somewhere around there. Okay, so for the likely Republican states, I have quite a few. I have Texas, I have Texas, uh, South Carolina, Ohio, and Iowa. Um, South Carolina, Trump won it by 12 points in 2020, won it by almost 15 points in 2016. I did originally have this in my, you know, in my... Uh, projection before I made alterations to it. I had it as safe Republican, but I do think that, you know, considering this margin for Hillary Clinton, she didn't win it, or she didn't, well, obviously she didn't win it. She didn't lose it by a safe margin, so I think that it'll be just under safe. Um, For Texas, Texas, of course, is a state that's been politically uh, this has been Republican for a very long time, but it's becoming bluer and bluer. In 2000, George W. Bush won it by 20 point, 21 points. 2004, he won it by 23. In 2008, it started to get a little bit bluer in, in a Democrat, but in a Democratic uh, wave environment. States like Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota being more competitive than Texas. McCain won it by 12 points. 2012, uh, Romney was able to do pretty well with... Um, with uh with Texans, especially suburban voters, he won it by sixteen points. In twenty sixteen, Trump uh dropped the ball in the state. He won it by nine points um against Hillary Clinton, but this was a lot smaller for margins in Texas than for for Republicans in uh, years past. In twenty twenty, it was a surprisingly very competitive. Trump only won it by six points. Um he did of course outperform polls in the state, but still the fact that, you know, Texas is that is that much bluer than it was just 20 years ago is um, shocking, you know. But I think that the national environment is against Biden, and I think that Texans are going to probably vote for Trump by somewhere between five, between six and nine points. Not going to be super strong for him. I don't see Texas really ever being safe for any candidate again. I think that the um, gubernatorial election is is not going to bode well for Beto O'Rourke, but I don't think he's going to lose by a safe margin. Might be double digits, though. Okay, um, for Iowa and Ohio, I'm going to go over these two states together because these are very um, politically similar states. As you can see, Trump won these by nearly ex the exact same margins. Iowa, but just a little bit um, more of a margin. In 2016, Ohio went to Trump by 8.1. Uh, uh, Ohio went to Trump by 8.1. Iowa went to Trump by about 9.5%. Before this, these states were pretty competitive. Obama was able to win Iowa by six points and Ohio by three. In 2008, they were very blue. I was almost, Iowa was almost 10 points uh, and Ohio was almost five. So as you can see, and you can see even in 2004, these states were a lot bluer than they were in 2020. And uh, Iowa actually went to Al Gore in uh, 2000. As you can see, Trump has had some effect here with his appeal to the white working class and uh, in the Rust Belt, uh, you know, the, you know, those kinds of voters. And so I think Iowa and Ohio will be somewhere, uh, they may be even double digits, but they'll be at least 8% each, you know, for bo both of them will be 8% each, or at least. For the lean Democratic states, I have two. I have Minnesota and New Hampshire. These two states were likely for Joe Biden. They were surprisingly close in uh, 2016. Uh, Minnesota went to Clinton by only a half, one and a half percent, and New Hampshire was quite close. In fact, it was the only state closer than um, New Hampshire was Michigan, which Trump won by um, a little over a fifth of, per of a percent. Uh, New Hampshire went to Clinton by 0.4 percent, just about.
And this was a very uh, bad performance for Democrats in New Hampshire. I think Joe Biden does have a much better appeal to New Hampshire residents. Of course, he won it by seven points. Uh, same here in uh, Minnesota, or same in Minnesota. Um, and uh, yeah, these two states will narrow up, but I think that they'll each be around four to three or four points for Joe Biden. They won't get... Uh, terribly close, especially not New Hampshire, because New Hampshire still, you know, does not, um, it still has a very strong democratic lean on social issues, um, pretty conservative on fiscal, uh, issues, um, does not, it has strong disdain for taxes, but that's not going to help Trump in this state. He lo he's lost it twice, even once when it was almost there for him, and, uh, you know, New Hampshire clearly does not like Donald Trump after some of the things he said about it. Um, for lean Republican states, I have quite a few. Uh, and this, I believe, uh, no, this is not going to put him over the top. Um, in Wisconsin, I guess I just spoiled who the winner of this matchup was going to be, but I think you guys could have already guessed that. Um, for the lean Republican states, I have Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. And I also have Nebraska's second congressional district. For the second congressional district, it has gotten, it has gotten a little bluer or a lot bluer with Trump on the ballot. Of course, Biden won it by almost seven points. Trump had won it by three point or by two points in 2016. Romney won it by seven points, and Obama won it by one point in 2008. Before this, it was solid red with the rest of Nebraska, and in redistricting, it has become a lot more Republican, or a little bit more Republican-leaning, so I think Trump wins it by about two or three percent, maybe one percent, um, but I think the suburbs, you know, these are pretty much the suburbs of Omaha, the Omaha area. It's, uh, it's, it's not going to be good for Joe Biden. Omaha will be, but I don't know about the suburbs there. I think Joe Biden's turned off a lot of people in the suburbs. So has Trump, but I think it's going to lean towards Trump's direction. In North Carolina, the state voted for Trump by one point. It voted for him by three points or four points almost in 2016. Uh, it before to, before Barack Obama, the state was pretty solidly red. It hadn't gone to a Democrat since Jimmy Carter in 1976. Um, in 2008, though, poll, Obama pulled off a pretty strong feat in North Carolina, won it by 0.3 percent. He of course lost it to Romney in uh, 2012, but it was still very competitive, and it had stayed that way ever since. Joe Biden came very close to winning North Carolina. He was expected to win North Carolina. Uh, so was Cal Cunningham in the 2020 Senate race against Tom Tillis. Both of them came up short. So Poland certainly does favor Democrats in North Carolina. And I think that um, Trump will win it by about one or two points, maybe three points um, in 2024 20, against um, Joe Biden. In Florida, the state has been getting a lot redder. Trump won it by even larger of a margin in 2020 than he did in 2016. I originally had it as likely, but I think that it would be just under likely. I think Ron DeSantis would be would be a much better candidate for Florida for reasons I'm sure you can figure out. This state, of course, is a solid swing state. Still is. Um, you know, I don't think 2022's races are going to be very strong for going to be good performances for Democrats. But I think in the long run, Florida is still a swing state. It just has a newfound Republican lean. Well, I don't know if I'd say newfound. It's it's been a Republican state for quite some time on the state level, and it does 99% of the time go to the GOP, but of course, things can happen, but not against Trump. Trump, you know, Biden was also expected to win Florida. He came, he came up short as, um, as well, and uh, yeah, I think he's going to come up short again, probably by four, almost five points. So yeah, in Wisconsin, the final lean state I have, uh, Joe Biden only won this state by 0.63%. This is the first Rust Belt of the or of the three Rust Belt states that went to um, Trump and Biden in 2016 and 2020, res respectively. Um, you know, this is of course part of, was part of the blue wall that was you know pretty solid for Democrats from 1992 to nine or to 2012. Even in 2000 and 2004, Bush was able to win the White House without the blue wall, without these three states, even though they were pretty close. 2008 and 2012, Obama capitalized on these states, particularly Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin was 14 points for Obama. That seems insane today. Um, in 2012, of course, he was able to win it by seven points. But Trump was able to flip it. Um, 
in 2016. Polls do have, you know, inherent in Wisconsin do have inherent Democratic leanings. Um, you know, Biden was expected to win the state by about seven points. Uh, he won it by just 0.63%. And I think that the fact that there was massive, you know, there, there was a lot of pushback on Trump, you know, and the fact that he only won he was a, wasn't even able to win it by over a point, that is distressing, distressing for Democrats. And I think Trump can probably capitalize on that, um, on a Wisconsin and in the Rust Belt more than any of these free states, really. Um, you know, Wisconsin is an odd state politically. It's, you know, kind of politically extreme at both, at, on both sides. Suddenly, you know, this really blue state or this really red state, you know, it depends on the year. It's very receptive to the national environment. And I think it will be this time. Um, in, uh, for the final four states, they are the tilt states. Sorry if this video has gone on for a little while. Um, but I think it's not, it hasn't gone on for too long. So I have three tilt states. For Joe Biden right now. I have Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. These are will be by extremely small margins. In Michigan, uh, Joe Biden was able to win by three points. Trump was able, this was his weakest state in the Rust Belt and was the closest state of the entire 2016 presidential race. He won it by just 0.2 percent. For this, Obama was able to pretty solidly carry the state. He won it by nine points in 2012, and it shifted nine points to the right to go to Trump very narrowly. In 2008, it was uh, 16 points. Michigan has pretty much always been, or almost always, you know, the most, bl the bluest state of these three. And I think that the fact that Biden, you know, Biden was, this was the state of these three that went to Biden by the most. I think that Biden does have some room, uh, does have, you know, of course, the, um, the black uh, Detroit areas, or, you know, the black areas and suburbs of Detroit will give him, you know, just enough to fall back on and be able to defeat Trump in the state. In Pennsylvania, Biden was able to win this state by one point. I'm very conflicted on Pennsylvania. Um, I think that it could be, you know, it could really go either way. Trump won it by 0 0.72. You know, it's been very competitive. It has, you know, Pennsylvania's pretty much always been a swing state, very receptive to the national environment. Not so much as Wisconsin, of course, but um, Joe Biden won only won by one point. Trump was expected to win in the state, you know, for the past couple days past election night. Um, but, you know, Biden was able to pull off a victory in Pennsylvania. And I think that he will be able to pull off a victory again. I think it'll be very close. Pennsylvania does um have a very slight democratic lean i think the democrats are going to have very lucky are very lucky to have had to have luck they've to have um they've really lucked out in the races this year in 2022 and uh you know for for governor and senate and you know 2020 and for the uh, u.s senate um and i think that biden's going to be able to very narrowly pull off a victory in pennsylvania as of right now um, but I think Trump still, it's still within reach. Final tilt state for Biden, state of Nevada. He, this state has been, you know, getting awfully close for Democrats. Barack Obama was very, did very good in the state. The last time a Republican won it was George W. Bush in 2004. And it was almost exactly by the same margin as, um, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden won it. They won it by the exact same margin, um, which is a uh, pretty, pretty funny. Um, but Trump was able, there was a narrow shift to the right in Nevada in 2020. Um, I think that, um, Trump would be able to do well in, a uh, Washoe County, which is the county up here, which usually votes with the winner. And then Clark County, which is down here, which is part of Las Vegas would of course go to Joe Biden, but it's not an inherently democratic county, but it would be enough to put him over the top in Nevada. I think that it is going to be very hard for Republicans. It's going to take a lot of energy for either party to really win this state. Nevada is truly a very competitive state now. Um, you know, it does have a Democratic lean, but of course, so was so did Virginia, so did Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin prior to 2016. They still, they still technically do have that lean, but, you know, they've all gone red before. Nevada's, you know, Democrats have gotten lucky here, and this, you know, 2.4 lead is not really something that they should be too confident about. But I think in this case, it would probably, you know, there would be just enough Democratic support left over to let Biden hold on. And the final state, which decides the entire election, the state of Arizona, I'm going, I'm going to give to Trump. 
This state has a very Republican history. It's only voted Democratic twice since uh, the nineteen since nineteen forty eight with Harry Truman. Of course, that was Harry. Or um, of course, those two times were Bill Clinton in nineteen ninety six. When, uh, you know, he won it over Bob Dole, the Republican then. And, of course, Joe Biden in 2020 when he won it over Donald Trump. I think that, you know, the Maricopa um, the Maricopa County voters who voted for Biden that were Republicans and, you know, suburban vo voters are still probably going to back him over Trump. But I think there could be some, uh, a lot, um, a drop in turnout and also just an, you know, pushing back on Biden because suburb, the suburbs have not been um, favorable to Democrats in some areas. They have been in Arizona. They really gave them Arizona in the presidential race and in, you know, the Senate race and House races. But I think, well, I guess, I don't know about the House races, but you, you get my point is that it's just, you know, it's a very swingy state. And I think right now Trump will be able to, um, you know, ride that um, dissatisfaction with Biden on a path to victory in Arizona and consequently to the White House again. So as you can see, the final map, uh, Joe Biden gets 265 electoral, vote, electoral votes. Uh, Tr Donald Trump gets uh, 273 electoral votes. Trump wins the presidency once again, elected to a second non-consecutive term, the first one to do so since Grover Cleveland in the 1890s. Um, of course, this, you know, prediction is not fact. This is my opinion. This is how I think that every race will go. Um, not solely based on opinion, of course. It has to do with data as well. But this is how I think the election would go if it were held today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share this video, uh, like it, turn on notifications, check out my main channel, Interactor127, if you want to see some more of my videos. Um, you know, they're not political or if you just want to hang out and have a good time See some more of my content. I hope you guys had a great day check out my um, or you're gonna I hope you guys have a great day check out my uh, comrade Garalin Zeus 666 who will hopefully be getting back to YouTube soon and uh, Yeah, I'll uh, see you guys next time when I talk about all things politics and we'll make a new prediction. See ya